Welcome back to the Island Docs. We're still on the topic of breast cancer. That's right, Dr. Sandy. We had an interview with our breast specialist, Dr. Rampol. Let's have a look at the tape. Thank you, Dr. Gordon. Thank you very much for having me on the show. Yeah, so Dr. Rampol, I mean, there's this big scare about breast cancer. We read the literature, we know it exists, but what exactly does it mean for a local Caribbean person, specifically a Trinidadian woman, in terms of breast cancer? Uh, that's a very, very important question. We found that diseases that are very common in the United States and England are very common here. And breast cancer is one in particular. The big worry is that breast cancer in Trinidad and Tobago, and I want to stress the other Caribbean islands, because I have colleagues who are breast surgeons or are particularly interested in breast cancer in Jamaica, in Barbados, in Antigua, Nevis, everywhere, even the Central American countries, if we want to think geography. Mm -hmm. And they're all very worried and very concerned. We're seeing a, an increasing number of women coming to us with breast cancer. And here's the big worry. We're seeing an increasing and a higher proportion of women who are being diagnosed at a younger age. Um, you, would, you would remember both of us collaborated on several projects where we were seeing and, and both of us have worked together and you know it's not unusual we've sat down and be worried about young women coming through the door with breast cancer. The, the problem is is that the Caribbean as a whole does not have a, it, does not, it lacks two major pivots. It lacks ag aggressive communication amongst inst health institutions. We do not, at least in a health perspective, we do not understand or try to lobby ourselves as Caribbean people and therefore health information and health programs are not easily exchanged. So what do I mean? There's no screening in Trinidad, but there's no screening on a Caribbean basis. Um, and that's an issue, you see, because for example, yes, the United States is made up of many states, but as a policy, you find that they understand health policy is ruled out amongst the states in a, in a broad common base. And so they understand what is the disease prevalence across border to border. But we don't, we don't practice that. But we are seeing in individual countries, we are seeing the same problem over and over and over. And lessons learned in one country or worries raised in one country is not being transferred to another island. And we need that. Mm -hmm. We need screening mm -hmm. and, and, and we need an ability to exchange health policies, just like we exchange political policy. Just like there's a CARICOM, there needs to be that sort of drive to be able to understand what is the increasing numbers and understand how do we deal with it. So say there's a lady with a diagnosis of breast cancer, what are her treatment options? Um, well, to begin with, breast cancer is at least 10 to 15 years ahead of other types of cancers in terms of our medical understanding. Mm -hmm. So you find that the drugs uh, that are available, the ability to achieve cure, the, the different types of managing it if it was to come back, we are, we are very advanced compared to others. And again, that's a drive from the amount of research that goes into breast cancer. So using that and the fact that we know so much more about breast cancer, it means that we are able to provide so much more in treatment options. And so I would say the take home is not, there isn't a fixed bag of treatment options, there are many, and it, has, it can be tailor-made. We're not far away from actually genetically designing treatment options as well. So that's something that is not far away from the bedside. Mm -hmm. Even today, as you would know, we can tailor make the choice of drugs like hormone drugs or Herceptin. These are tailored on the biology of the breast cancer. It depends on the age, it depends on the wishes, it depends on the size, but there are many. I think the take home is a woman shouldn't think as long as she has breast cancer, she must have her breast removed. That is not true. Similarly, a woman shouldn't think that if she was to have breast cancer, she must have chemotherapy that's going to make her sick mm -hmm. and her hair fall off. That's not true, and you've seen it. Mm -hmm. We've both collaborated on many patients and seen that we can actually try to achieve cure, but tailor the treatment for her. All right, so the other question I have for you is, so the lady has breast cancer and she had a mastectomy done. Now, I know a lot of women are afraid of actually having a mastectomy because, you know, they suffer body image problems, they have problems with their marriage, problems with their home. What are the treatment options in terms of reconstruction for a patient with mastectomy? Um, again, I would say it's an exciting time. 
um, from the point of view that we can offer as a doctor. It's an exciting time to be a breast surgeon. It's an exciting time to be able to to join with this woman in fighting breast cancer because I, we can bring to the table so much more. So you start the question by asking me what can we do if she had a mastectomy. But now, as an oncoplastic surgeon, I get in there and even while the mastectomy is happening, the way we do it, we can reconstruct you immediately. Mm -hmm. So we now have the reality that women can wake up and not lose their breasts, meaning the outside, the shape, the cleavage, her ability to put on a dress in 10 days or 20 days and not be flat on one side. So immediate breast reconstruction is real and it is safe. The key is, are we trying to lobby to provide this for a larger number of women and how much skill is out there on it? But it is available. I do it almost exclusively um, and I could tell you many women who have breast cancer and need to have their breast tissue removed do want to have immediate re reconstruction and immediate means it happens in the same operation. There's also hope for women who have had to have a mastectomy or may come to me after another surgeon may have removed the breast and we can rebuild the breast back there and there's a variety of techniques using either their own fat which is something very exciting for Caribbean women they love that that I can now take out their fat from liposuction there's a way to treat it and then I can use it to re-inject and build the, the breast back there's also a, there's also different ways where I use different parts of their body like their back or their tummy and so on but we can build back um, a breast on different materials even after you've had a, a mastectomy. Okay, thank you Dr. Rampal for all that valuable information about breast cancer. We're going to take a break now, but when we come back, stay tuned. We have much more to discuss concerning breast cancer.